Let's have a look at the main menu system now. Pressing the menu key will bring up the main menu level one. Now this is a list of our commonly used menu items. It starts with the daytime or nighttime setting. We can end the current flight, we can cancel the go to, we can access our route manager and our fuel totalizer functions are here as well and stopwatches. Number nine is our weight and balance calculator. We can press number nine to access that. And here's our weight and balance calculator. This one is set up for an RV7. If we want to change the pilot weight, all we do is press button number one and enter our new pilot weight of 185 pounds. And here we can see our full fuel and empty fuel CGs are calculated. The weight of the fuel is automatically calculated based on the known fuel level from your senders and the known weight of the fuel, so no entries are required here. So let's have another look at the main menu. Let's press it one. We've got the main menu level one. Anytime there's extra menu items, you press page down for the next page. And here we can see we've got one item on the second page. And let's press menu again. Now we're in the main menu level two. This is where most of the settings are, 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 are entered. And as you can see, we've got a, a bunch of extra settings here. Let's look at GPS information, button number one. Here we can see our GPS information page. Menu backs us out of that menu. You can see we've got a waypoint manager, flight log, and we've got uh, some common tasks here. This is where you can enter your UTC offset. As you can see, it has not been set up. We can export a flight log. There's some inspection timers as well. Let's press menu to back out of there. Um, here you can see the system setup menu. Uh, we're going to get back to this in a minute. This is where a lot of the setup is done. Uh, below you can set up the horizon sensor. On the next page you can set up the compass, the autopilot, the 3D view setup. Let's just give you an example of that. Press button number three. Here you can see all the setups for the 3D view, including the 3D terrain and the highway in the sky. And at the bottom, the velocity vector, which is a nice feature. And you can make adjustments by pressing the eight key for that. So let's uh, back out of this menu by pressing menu. And let's have a look what's below that. There's some more calibrations here, some diagnostics, page up and page up again. And here we are at the system setup menu. And this is where most of the setup is done. Let's press 7. You can see at the top there's time and date items set up. System units. Let's press system units. Uh, all of the items can be displayed in any units. Let's look at speed units. Nautical miles, miles, kilometers, nautical miles. Uh, let's look at the atmospheric pressure. It can be set up in inches of mercury or millibars. So those are just some of the, the setups that are available. Let's have a look at the system operation setup. Button number 3. We can enable automatic flight detect. We can set up the parameters for that. And there are a bunch of other options available to us here. Let's back out of that by pressing menu. We've got fuel related setup. We've got engine monitoring setup. Here we can see we can either have one RDAC or two RDACs connected for a twin engine or a single engine with many cylinders. So you can adjust that by pressing these keys over here. Um, each one of the engine items is totally configurable so that you can use it with any engine. For example, let's look at the oil temperature setup, button 5. You can see how the first item is the probe type. We can use any kind of probe available or used commonly today in aviation. And all of the alarm and caution settings can be entered as well. Let's have a look at uh, another one of the engine items, the oil pressure. Here we can use probe type, automotive resistive, or linear voltage. So as you can see, we've made it very configurable so that the user is free to use whatever engine they like. Let's back out by pressing menu. And we've got fuel related down there. We've got flight instruments. We've got alarm setup and routing. Let's have a look at that. Each item can have an alarm set up for it. Uh, and uh, you can set up an on-screen alarm, an external light uh, for the panel. And we have voice alerts that can be set up for each item. Let's back out of this menu. And let's go down and see what's on the next page. Here we have uh, uh, more setups. We can set up uh, the, the source of our HSI or glide slope indication. We've got a terrain, a terrain warning. Um, here you can set up the, the terrain warning parameters. We have uh, a traffic uh, monitoring setup. Our unit is compatible with just about any traffic monitoring system uh, available today. And we also have a checklist setup over here, number six. Here you can create a checklist and these are easily accessible from the main display. Let's have a look at some of the other functions. Um, if you exceed the roll rate limitation of the AHARS, which happens to be more than the roll rate of a PIT special, um, the AHARS will topple just like a regular gyro will. To fix this, we have a level function here. Get the aircraft uh, righted and press shift level. 
and it'll level the air harsh right away. So that's how you do that. Also, if you're flying slowly at a high angle of attack, uh, for example, and you want to zero the pitch, we have a zero pitch function. Uh, we want to bring the pitch up to the, up to the zero. We push shift and zero pitch, and we back to zero here. So even if you're flying along the high angle of attack, uh, it'll be zeroed. We can undo it by pressing shift pitch again, and then we back to navigating around. Anytime an alarm parameter is exceeded, you get an alarm message on the screen. Fuel level is low. Uh, to acknowledge the alarm, you just press the alarm acknowledge key and uh, the message uh, disappears. If you want to check what the alarm was, press the acknowledge key again and the alarm message will come back up. So that's what the acknowledge button does. The SD card on the Odyssey is very useful. It is used for doing all software updates. You never have to take your laptop to the airplane uh, to install updates on the Odyssey. Also, the flight data recording file is stored on the SD card, so it's important to have this inserted during flight. The Odyssey EFIS is a lightweight unit with a shallow mounting depth. All of the connectors on the rear are easy to use, and it is one of the easiest EFIS systems to install. For those of you who have made it through this video demonstration, thank you for watching. The Odyssey is one of the most capable, functional, and feature-rich EFIS systems available today. For around $6,000, you've got a full EFIS, including engine monitoring, moving map GPS, and a host of other functions normally only found on units costing thousands more. And for under $10,000, you can have two in your panel. We hope that you'll consider MGL Avionics for your next EFIS.